Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this week I have bought a Jaguar XKR X100 Vintage off of uh, Taylor and they bought this vehicle from Monaco. So I thought it would be a good idea and a good opportunity to show you all what the pros and cons of buying XKRs of this vintage and how to check them over and look through them and all the rest of it. So this is the XKR 100 buying guide. What turned me on to it? Um, one, hopefully I bought it cheap. Well, I did buy it cheap, to be fair. Um, and the reason that I committed to this car was because literally it's come from Monaco. So in my experience, the last time I checked, uh, people who live in Monaco got a couple of quid. So you've got to go on the theory that it's probably been a well looked after and cared for car. It turned up at the workshop on Friday, two days ago, um, after being driven a thousand miles from Monaco back to the workshop in one stint, which I thought was a bit crazy of them, but that's what they did. I, mean, I didn't really give the car a good inspection. I had a quick walk around it, a quick look at it, quick look at the paperwork uh, and, and committed to buy it. I paid £5,000 for this car. Okay, it's done 116,000 miles. It's got an engine management light on, the seat doesn't work, you know, and gave me a list of faults, okay? So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you the things that you really need to look out for on, the, on these cars. We're gonna give it a bit of a clean in a minute, just so we can have a proper look at the bodywork, because corrosion's a big issue on these. So that's the thing that really ends up costing you a lot of money. What do I think this car's worth from a retail point of view? I think it's probably a 10, 12 grand car. The first thing is, is we'll just do a little walk around the car. X100s were made from 1996, very early ones, four litres. Um, and then we changed to the 4.2 in 2002. And then the last of line was 2005. This particular car is a 2003. First thing that when I first saw this car, uh, when Taylor first spoke to me about it, he said, he goes, oh, it's um, white badge. Now, a white badge car is normally last of line 4.2S and stuff like that. So when it turned up, it's got a Jaguar XKR 100 badge. Now, I knew straight away that wasn't right because an XKR 100 was a special edition that came out to uh, celebrate the, what would have been the 100th birthday of Sir William Lyons, the founder of Jaguar. So this is not a 2001 car, it's a 2003 car. It's not really a big deal. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm going to change the badge because I'm going to try and put this back to how it should be. Okay. Yeah. So, but I suppose it's good for someone, like you say, good to someone just to check. So, well, yeah, but you could get drawn in. Yeah, you could. You could think you? it's yeah. something that it isn't yeah, if you don't point. do your homework. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I noticed straight away that it's got the, it's got HID headlights, which is a, a good thing because the headlights are much better. Uh, it's got the black uh, background in the lamp here rather than a silver background. Um, but also, the other problem with those is, is that when they go wrong, they're more expensive to fix. Yes, so yeah. there's positives and negatives They're to the self-leveling ones, aren't they? They're self-leveling, the HID, yeah. they've got a module yeah. in them. They're a lot, lot more expensive when they go wrong. Oh. But, and then someone else has also put um, clear, in, yeah. clear bumper reflectors in, which was, you know, you buy them from aftermarket companies, Adamesh, my mate Jeff at Adamesh, you can get them. They look quite good, but these ones have actually sort of faded a bit. Yeah. And I think that's probably where it's been in the sun in Monaco. Yeah, that's you true. Know. And again, just so people know, they aren't actually indicators, are they? No, no, they're the, reflectors. They're reflectors. And in America, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, in the American market, they would have been a side marker. Side marker. Yeah, yeah, what they call a side marker okay. in the So States, any yeah. UK car you see, if they're orange, pale, or whatever, or colour-coded, yeah. they're definitely, they don't work. They shouldn't work. They're just yeah. reflectors. Uh, the other thing I noticed straight away is the fog lights um, have faded. Yeah. So they, they just go a bit milky. There's nothing wrong with them. They still functionally work. It's just a, it's just a thing that okay. it makes it not perfect. We have a 20 inch BBS Montreal wheels. Well done, Tom. Yeah. Uh, which, so they're quite nice wheels, but again, yeah. when you're looking at buying an XK, um, the, these, are, these are the nicest looking wheel. There's no two ways about it. What, the, the, BB the BBS? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Whether you like the Detroit or the Sepang or the Montreal, there's a few other things. Paris, isn't there? And yeah, anyway, that's right. Yeah. But again, they're expensive to um, refurb and maintain. 
Yeah, because right. they're are they two part. They're split rim. Split yeah, rim, these, these I mean, little yeah. bolts actually come undone. The whole wheel comes apart. These should be chrome finished, but someone's actually painted these ones. So what a lot of people did was they, the chromes are really expensive. So when they refurb the wheels, they haven't painted. And I, I actually like drive tribe. <laughs> did drive tribe? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> Mike Funny has had. Mike, if you want to set a chrome, <laughs> I've got some upstairs. They anyway, should, they should be chrome, shouldn't they? They yeah. should be chrome. I don't mind them painted, and I understand why people do it, yeah. okay? Um, it's obviously a non-genuine badge. Again, that's an aftermarket thing. Union Jack badge, I, you know, it's, it's down to your personal taste yeah. if you like that or not. But it has got the bigger Brembo brakes. That is something well worth having, Yeah. okay? Wing repeater, someone's put a clear lens on it. Um, again, uh, you know, again, that was a, quite a big thing when these first came yeah. out, of stuff to of modify. As I'm walking around the car, I'm looking for rust. That's it. Yeah. Because you normally get rust down around here and along the sill area. Uh, and this looks, on initial face value, it all looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, I've got, a, you know, I'm looking at for paint damage and stuff like this. There's a little few scratches there. Um, when I'm looking at the front of the car, windscreen area, this has got what we call Dorchester grey trims, right? So you yeah. have a grey scuttle, grey trim here. The mirror is grey, but when I come round to the side of the car here, these window trims, they often fall apart. These are actually in pretty good nick. They're not corroded. So this is this trim here is uh, inside there is aluminium. So it's an aluminium uh, moulding and that has the rubber around it and then this trim gets put on the outside of it. And they corrode and they fall apart and they're actually really difficult to get hold of. But what someone's done is they've painted these in not in the correct colour. And the okay. other, when we go around the other side, the other side's worse. Yeah, it should okay. be this, what we call Dorchester Was grey. Was it always this colour, Tom? Because well, yeah. some of them, are they always Well, look, you know, this is really interesting. Look, you, if you look at this here, I don't yeah. know if it's fade compared to that trim there. Does it, they, they don't look the same colour, no, do they? No, they're not. They're not. And that's no. not just angle and the play okay. of light. They're different colours. So I will, one of the things I will do on this is if I've got to paint these, you'll paint them as well. I, I might as well just do the, yeah. okay, and it'll enough. just make it, you know, because to, to paint these, and to then additionally do those, there's not much, hmm. financially, there's not much money in it, yeah. and it make quite a good impact for the car. You want to have a really good look around the wheel arches here, yeah? Because they always corrode. This is the main area of rust all around here, yeah. and then down along there. So feel, run your fingers down there, and see if you can feel bubbling and corrosion, because when it goes wrong, that's where it goes. And the metal work and the paint work is the thing that's going to cost you the most amount of money. This one, is showing no signs of corrosion. But I have, did have a quick look through the um, book pack earlier, or the, the stuff that came with it, and this guy's actually had this done. Nice. So has it had corrosion? Yes. Has it been dealt with? Yes. Is it, you know, whoever's done it's done a reasonable job because it's standing the test of time and it's not bubbling back through or anything like that. So, okay, again, walk around the back, reflectors. Uh, we've got a parkade system on here, we've got rear parkade, so we want to make sure and double check that that works. Yeah. Um, these exhaust and tailpipes, I can tell straight away, they're not standard. No, they're not, are they? they look bigger. No, and uh, again, I looked through the paperwork, it's had an Adamesh uh, rear box uh, delete. So, someone went to Adamesh, went to see my mate Jeff and said, I want boom, 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 bought a load of stuff and bolted it on this car. Okay, nice. However long ago. Go into the boot of the car. Um, <laughs> interesting enough, I got a, a spare set of headlights of it. So because the car was, this is a UK car that went to Monaco um, and he's got left hand drive headlamps in it. Right, okay. Those there are the right hand drive headlamps. Good, so you can swap, so them, swap them back over, which is, which is a really good thing for us because I know these headlamps got quite a bit of value to them. So we've, we've made a couple of quid out of the, out of the headlamps. But what I'm actually going to do with the headlamps is I'm gonna put the correct ones in the car, set all the light beams up. The left-hand drive ones, they're gonna be troublesome for me to sell because I don't do a lot of left-hand drive cars. So it's something you need to sell in the foreign market, but I'm not in the business of um, selling parts. So I'm gonna give them to my mate Andy at Auto Reserve, who does sell a lot of parts into Europe. They're, you know, a set of those headlights can do 750 quid a grand, something on those sorts of line. So I've already rung him up and done a deal with him where I'm gonna give him the headlights and then I said to him, I need certain parts to sort this car out 
to get it back to where it needs to right, be. I see, yes. So I've swapped the headlights for the parts I'm gonna need. Right, so the boot all opens and shuts. Oh, there's no spare wheel in there as well, actually. We noticed. Yeah. Uh, and no tool kit, which isn't really a big deal because of spare wheels and tool kits we can get hold of. But you've got to remember, this is car's got Brembo's. So there's two types of spare wheel um, from uh, Space Saver wheel, that is. There's a steel black one, which is for the smaller brakes. And then if you've got a Brembo, you need the red aluminium wheel, yeah. um, which I've actually got a couple of upstairs. So, I'm not, so that's not really too much bother. But um, yeah, so we will be putting a, a Space Saver spare wheel in it because you don't want to be sat on the side of the motorway stuff, no, do you? No, you don't. <clears throat> don't know how good the paint is. We're going to clean it in a minute. We're going to go and yeah. clean it in a minute because I want to find out. But you know, so this is, you know, when I say this is how I bought it, it literally turned up like this. What about the aerial, Tom? I noticed that's not gone down completely. Aerial's not gone fully down. It does come up, I've checked that. That's just gonna be a bit of dirt and grime in there, so that's just gonna need cleaning. Okay, so it's not something so to be alarmed I'm, I'm not worried about okay. that at all, yeah? Right. Oh, first issue. First is, issue. Is that parcel, it's parcel tape, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's happened is this quarter glass here um, has not come up. And then what they've done is someone's put a load of um, packing tape on it to keep it up, try and waterproof it, you know. Um, so look, they're actually quite expensive. I will get a second hand one off of Auto Reserve and, um, and we'll fix that. But you know, that's, that's, that's quite a costly thing. I'm gonna say, if you bought a second hand unit, by the time you bought that, had it fitted, that's probably gonna cost you 500 quid to okay. sort that out. And it's not something that you can sort out with a relay switch or anything. No, if it's no, like I've, that, already, I've already tried bringing it up and down and I can hear it graunching. Right. So, so there's a cable on the mechanism. The cable's come off because it's chewed up. Something's broken up. You just need a replacement unit. I said about these trims. Yeah, look at this trim here. So we've got to paint that. It's, oh, it's yeah. really, it's all crazy. Oh and, yeah, you can fix it with bubbled and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, so I know I've got to paint that, so I might as well, as I said yeah. earlier, I might as well do the rest of the Dorchester grey trims and have them matching. Um, keys, yes, look, I've got two remotes. I've got two keys and I've got the, the valet key. which is oh, That's the, good. Yeah, so I've got a full set of keys. which That's is, really good. And the remotes work, I've checked that. Because you can get them, can't you, but you have to pay to have them reprogrammed. And yeah, 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 you can buy new keys. Keys are quite expensive for what they are, By the really, time you start adding, like you yeah, said, it's yeah, another yeah, couple yeah. hundred quid by the yeah, time you've bought. Easy, yeah, yeah, you can't, the remotes are no longer available. We have to get second hour ones, so a second hour remote's gonna cost you 100 pound. Uh, one of those keys is 70 or 80 quid. Yeah, you so know. if you've got a full set, that's, that's yeah, good yeah, news, yeah. yeah. Uh, roof's in pretty good nick, a few little marks in it where it's been down, but the stitching's nice, it's not separating for the age of the car and the mileage of the car, that's that roof's in good condition. So I open up the door and I go, oh, I've got, um, I've got aluminium or metal pedals, right? Yeah. I've got this badge here, which says R on it. Yeah. Okay. I've got chrome rings on the, on the dash. Yeah. This car's an R pack car. Yeah. So, that's, so that means it has slightly better suspension. Um, yeah, it's got the adaptive damping, yeah, but it's, 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 what, it's what they call the R performance package, yeah. okay? So, you know, that's, this is a really well-spec car. It's also, I notice on here, when I look on the side of the steering wheel, it's got little buttons there, so it's got, um, uh, yeah, it's got adaptive it. cruise. Yeah. Which adaptive cruise is a really, really nice system when it's working well, yeah? When it's not working, it's a pain, and I actually think that we might have a small problem with it. But I've got to delve into it. I've not, I've not got that far yet. We've got Recaros, mate. Oh, they're good. So yep. they were a very, very expensive optional extra. I really like Recaro seats. They, they, they hug your body. They, they make the car for me. And they're now, even second hand, a couple of grand. Two and a half grand set of yeah. Recaros. Definitely. Yeah. And I've got them in my car and they've transformed it. I had the original sports seats. Your bum's all over the place when you go around corners. This, these hug you tight. These, these are the much, side much bolster. Yeah. The bolster, yeah. So, really, uh, really good, really desirable. So now, when the car was here, I just quickly went through the electrics. Um, the seat goes back forth, but it doesn't, uh, the upper section doesn't go, uh, doesn't recline and go forward. Ah. So I've got a motor problem, possibly an issue with a module. That can be an expensive thing to fix as well. Okay, so, so but just to scan over the interior, apart from the fact that it's full of rubbish and dirt, because Alex, Rory and Taylor, um, the animals. They are animals. I mean, based on what I've just told you about this car, you know, bearing in mind, I've made a long-winded sort of explanation of all this, but when this is happening that evening, this is, this, 
these, all these thoughts and decisions are going through in my head in like, I don't know. 10 minutes. Less than that. Okay. <laughs> so to make the decision, how much am I going to pay for this car? Um, and that, what, what you now know about this car is what I knew that evening. So what we now need to do is we now need to clean the car, see if we've got any other paintwork issues, um, put it up on the ramp and give it a mechanical inspection, come up with a list, a job list, and then I need to then price that out and then make it as financial decisions on what I do, what I don't do, etc. Okay. Um, to turn this into a car that someone's gonna wanna buy. Oh, more importantly, I'm happy to sell. Tom, are you doing a wet t-shirt competition now? <laughs> <laughs> This is, yeah, this I is think, QU, like leading across the car, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with not, a sponge. I'm, not, I'm no, uh, what's her name, Cameron Diaz. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> Keeping it real, Tom, aren't you? Look, you see here. Look, mate, someone's, you know, someone's got to do this. And it doesn't really matter if it's me or The Apprentice. When they turned up on Friday, I should have stuck this up in the air. You know, I'm, I'm starting to lose interest in this deal at the moment.